We've got critical Q2 Palantir earnings on deck to be released in just a week on Monday, August 5 and after hours. And this is for their financial results up to June 30th, 2024. So will Palantir beat expectations on earnings and finally showcase an uptick in growth that might meaningfully show they're ready to spread like wildfire, as well as they set their guidance with an upward revision last time. So optimistically, can they do it again and still exceed these? But here's what to look out for for the latest results and increasing importance in my opinion. Now, first is Gap Net Income, which last quarter in May came in better than my original expectations. Palantir is still expanding this metric with officially six times in a row now positively, although some think it's still not fast enough. But for me personally, focused on the growth of the business overall, I have no issue with them continuing to not focus on this as long as they just keep it positive. Now, in case of any unexpected events, of course, it still isn't a bad idea to continue fluffing this up. But for the major story and narrative around Palantir's growth, this is more of a side quest. But it's nice to know that they can make money as a business, and when they do expand revenues down the line, there will be that profitability engine already fine-tuned. And the other reason investors like to focus on this, though, is just to continually ensure that they keep their S&P eligibility for when they are accepted into the index. So there's no way around this one, of course, for that rule. So for Q2, staying flat or slightly higher is fine for my taste. Now, when we've got the operating cash flow, which is crucial to the sustainability of their business, obviously, Palantir basically has a zero risk of bankruptcy right now or even be put into a position where they have to take on debt or even consider it. Their balance sheet is padded for this, and the big contributor to this is accumulating their operating cash flow. And as seen on their balance sheet, this cash and treasury hoard is still here and growing ready for a rainy day or an opportunity at least that might require a fat stack of cash. Now, sitting at almost $4 billion of cash at $3.9 billion, this is a continue to rack up interest down to their bottom line for a lot of it being in treasuries, and that, of course, makes its way down to gap net income. Now, there's always an argument you can get a better rate of return, of course, investing in yourselves, but that doesn't come without risk. I trust management to continue being careful with the cash rather than being all willy-nilly on something that can end up being a waste of time and money. Now, if the Fed starts cutting rates rapidly, this will change the equation a bit, but that still hasn't happened yet here. And before you go after me, of course, in the comments, yes, I understand this is a metric crutched up by stock-based compensation as well, but there's always that balance of knowing how valuable it can be to have employees with ownership and having skin in the game, but I'll let you discuss that down below with each other. Expanding this as much as possible or seeing an upward trend when Q2 is out would be ideal. Now, next is net dollar retention, and there was a surprising improvement last quarter with this going to a 111% versus in Q4 2023 being only at 108%. So this speaks volumes already about their existing customer base and the value that they're able to provide, as well as expand the services to them and provide it to these customers. Note, this is a very backward looking metric, though, with different cohorts of customers, and this is delayed until they reach it into here. So newly minted customers will take time to have an effect on this. But regardless, the value going up here is that Pounder is holding on to customers, but even able to get more revenue from them as well. And if this stays the same for Q2 also, I don't think it'll be the end of the world. It's mostly important to show the downward trend does not restart again. Then we've got a new metric that management intentionally wanted to draw attention to last quarter, concerning it was the first time that they included in their presentation and earnings call talking points. So this is called the rule of 40. Essentially, this is a metric to highlight how sustainable their business is through their margins without losing money. It's a combination of two percentages here that should add up to more than 40, one being their growth rate year over year for revenue, as well as their adjusted operating margin for the periods presented. Now, as an industry standard, it's nice to see them exceed this and clearly Palantir wanted to showcase this and going in the right direction over consecutive quarters. And for Q2, Palantir just needs to show them continue to perform well on this and optimistically it keeps trending upward. I'd be more concerned if it's not presented again because they went out of their way to include it last quarter. Then it's always great to see how many deals they got signed for the quarter. So last one, they got 87 deals of at least $1 million, while 27 were at least $5 million and 15 at least $10 million. I'll say it's a cool metric and always want to see this, of course, and go up, but it isn't crucial to the growth narrative and story concerning if they're signing up a bunch of new customers. It won't necessarily hit the mark here and show up depending on the deal size. And if the priority is about getting customers into the door, onto the products first, we shouldn't emphasize this too much on Q2's number. 
numbers. Then profitability wise, I say I care more about this than the gap net income, it's gap operating income, which means no reliance on financial engineering or interest income. This shows in reality of how their business can sustainably in a financial sense, keep growing and make money as a business. And this keeps up the narrative around their grow responsibly model, not necessarily at all costs, what we want to ensure as the business grows top line wise, dollars will make its way down to the operating income. For Q2, I continue to monitor if this is actually still going to keep on moving in the upwards direction. The bigger, the better, of course, but truly the levers are in Poundtree's control with bringing in more revenue, of course, but also staying disciplined with their operational costs. And they've proven to be on track as management team, in my opinion. Now onto the crucial make or break metrics here that will get all the attention, of course, and I think a lot of others will agree. First, starting off with commercial revenue. Their U.S. business continues to thrive when they showed 40% growth. But when you look at it in aggregate with international, it drops down to a hard 27%. Now, I'm not surprised they didn't want to easily break it out for them all to see that international commercial growth being very small. But for Q2, we want to see them continuing to expand U.S. commercial because that has been the recent narrative of their sweet spot of growth. They are running all these boot camps and putting out all these resources. It at least gives the impression that the path to getting onto Panther's product is much easier easier, which in turn should mean customers get into the door. But we'll see if that stays consistent. Now, I don't know honestly what to expect for international commercial revenue too. Essentially, we don't want overall commercial to drop down too much when US is combined with international, and we want to exceed that combined 27% mark last time, hitting in maybe to the 30s. Now, for the government revenue, it honestly feels a bit unpredictable to me. But we did have some great PRs in the beginning of 2024, and this is around Titan Phase 3 getting awarded to Palantir, as well as that Maven contract. Contract. So depending on how it is allocated to the quarter for those revenues, we may see a bump from these, but you have to remember that there's a reliance of the existing revenue streams as well being upkept or growing too alongside these. Now, I like to see government revenue as the stable, maybe slower growing business, but you never really know when that jumbo contract comes around and this skyrockets because of a massive project. So I'll continue to monitor here. More interestingly is if they can get international government revenue to jumpstart, maybe not necessarily from Europe or from other sources forces like in Asia as the region is still dealing with the pressures from China geopolitically as well as economically. So together, at least for the last quarter, the beat of the expectation set from management with $634 million of revenue had a 21% year-over-year growth rate from that base of $525 million, and that's back from Q1 2023. So their goal was only for 16.5% based on that guidance for the quarter, and they ended up smashing this one out of the park surprisingly. Now for the upcoming Q2, last year's Q2 2023 revenue was $533 million or $8 million more than the other baseline. While for guidance they provided for this upcoming earnings is for $649 million to $653 million, meaning they expect a growth rate of 22.5% if they hit the high end of this. Now in my own book, the higher the better, right? But if they can get hit the upper end of guidance, this continues to show a positive direction for the growth rate itself from that 21% last quarter. This will show investors and the whole market in general if Palantir's business is starting to grow faster and faster, considering first it's a larger baseline, slightly at least, by $533 million instead of that $525, but two, this is a continuing pattern of going up versus back when we fell down to that 17% growth rate at one point, which was really disappointing back then. So we'll see how they do next week in revealing these numbers. Now, guidance will be massively important as well for the forward-looking side of things, not only on how they did last quarter that we'd see with the revenue, numbers, but what are they expecting for Q3 2024? Considering there are still two months left, but still one of earnings are announced, it would have already been a month of performance, which I'd expect Palantir's management already knows about or at least has some familiarity with. Last quarter, they gave positive revisions with that previously mentioned 22.5% upward end of Q2 guidance smashing that out. So will they continue to show that Q3 2024 will have a higher quarterly growth rate, maybe even back into the mid-20s range, which would be ideal in my opinion? If it stays at a similar pace between 21 to 23 percent, it's not a huge disappointment per se, but I don't think investors will be very, very happy about it to see that and not projecting to continue to grow at a faster pace. But we do see that they have beaten their expectations before. So if we see any upward revisions for that, it's always a plus, but also for full year 2024, which did get a slight increase from last quarter. But this does make me curious to know, do you care more about their guidance or actual growth? In ideal world, both are stellar, but which would you prefer to take the spotlight? Now, the most important numbers to me, and also what I believe everyone else is trying to see if the growth is coming down the pipeline for Palantir, this is customer count. 
It's important to note because as we saw last quarter with the better revenue, it was from mostly existing customers, which was seen with the better than expected net dollar retention. The customer count is what I'd say is the most future predicting metric to see if Palantir's customers will start to drive the revenue growth down the line because as they've demonstrated with history, once you're on Palantir, you seem to use them for more and more things and end up getting value from them, which then means you pay a bit more to use them still. So just because the sheer amount of responsibility they have for making things work for your business doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see the dollars immediately. So for U.S. commercial account, we added 41 customers last quarter, while overall commercial was an addition of 52. So 11 were international commercial customers. And then the overall customer count increased from 497 to 554, which is in total 57 customers. So no doubt U.S. commercial is the one driving this. And with their growth in revenue being mainly driven by U.S. customers, they need to get the pipeline of incoming dollars beefed up here. If we can break into the 600 total customer market, Market, which is only 46 more and that should be very doable considering the last time they had an increase of 57 and i really want to see if u.s commercial customer count explodes because of all the new things that we keep hearing about now onto the earnings call i won't be surprised if they continue to talk about their continued support for the u.s government and how their mission is aligned with western values around the world so not new stuff but they'll probably have some points related to global conflicts or adversaries and maybe talking about some of the u.s military deals that pertain to this so we know they like to highlight their big contract wins like titan and maven but most important for me personally is depending on the results what is driving the growth and in the numbers that were disclosed and of course the guidance and expectations around future growth continuing to get bigger. The reason is because it seems there has been a lot of communication from Palantir and the opportunities for customers to get into the door here, as I keep saying. The latest AIP con, of course, is the rock concert, but I'd say getting the build Palantir set up for the free account, as well as the opportunity to upgrade to an enterprise account shows promise because it's just a low barrier to entry. And if they're also willing to share the progress on that, and if it's worth continuing to pursue or double down on, I'm always interested. There's also just the general growth drivers around boot camps we're interested to hear about. We get those anecdotal examples of contracts and the millions of dollars getting signed because of them or started on at least because of the boot camp. But I'm more curious about around the overall engagement and the aggregation of boot camps and say the conversion rate of customers, or if they still appear to have difficulties around the salesy aspect of things, or if they've gotten better at it or the things they're doing to mitigate any issues, or maybe things have turned around and just doing better. And I just want to hear those numbers. I'm just looking to see if they talk about what's under the hood a bit more since we only hear about them happening and roughly how many have occurred, but not enough to know if they are actually working on a large scale. But I'm curious to know your thoughts on the upcoming earnings. What do you expect for some of the metrics as well as the earnings call? Let me know down below and I'll see you in the next video.